Hey y'all, this is Amanda and welcome back to my Texas Zone 8A garden and I am back from my 20th anniversary cruise and today I am so excited to be talking about all things zinnias. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about why you should grow zinnias, tips and tricks for zinnias, and I'm also going to show you all the varieties of zinnias that I'm going to be starting in my garden right now. I have four main reasons of why you should grow zinnias. Number one being that they are just a bountiful, abundant plant, meaning they're going to produce lots and lots of flowers that will bring you lots of joy. Number two, they are bright and cheerful. I love the bold colors of zinnias. I love the brightness about them. I love that they're in oranges and pinks and purples and greens, and you can even do them in more elegant colors like white and blush. Another reason you should be growing zinnias is because they're easy. They're easy to grow. They're easy to start from seed. They're easy to buy from a local nursery and plant into your garden. They're just easy, joyful flowers. And then the fourth reason is really more for my location. Zinnias are very heat tolerant. So during the hottest parts of the summer, they're really producing the most beautiful, vibrant, bright colored flowers. And that is a really key, important thing for someone in my particular location. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about zinnias, a little bit more of the informational background on zinnias. They are native to the Southwest United States, Mexico, and Central America areas. So my particular zone, zone 8A, they are um, native to my particular area, which is really, really nice, meaning they do well. However, even if you're not in those particular areas, zinnias can really still do very well for you if you pick the right location for them in your garden. Now there's a wide variety of zinnias and zinnias are part of the aster family and asters and zinnias are really great at producing a lot of extra seeds. Um, zinnias can range in a wide variety of heights, anywhere from six inches to 48 inches. Truthfully, I've had a lot of uh, particular zinnias, particularly the uh, Purple Prince series. They've grown five feet plus for me. So in the optimal conditions, you can get some really, really tall dramatic zinnias. Zinnias come in in a wide variety of types of blooms, anywhere from like a single, so just a single row of petals, to a double, to a semi-double, to a spider slash dahlia or cactus kind of form, wide variety. And I think that's one of the great things about zinnias is they add so much texture to your garden. Now, zinnias can be used in multiple ways within a garden. They can be used as a border plant. Um, the lower zinnias are great as a beautiful border in the fronts of your garden. You can tuck some of the taller series into the back of your garden to bring some drama and height, or you can just utilize them, you know, in a strip of your garden and cut them as cut and come again flowers or for your cutting garden. No matter where you decide or how you're wanting to use the zinnias, the most important thing is that you have full sun for them. They must have minimal six to eight hours and you make sure you have really great airflow. They do tend to be drought to tolerant. However, I found that in the hottest parts of my summer, July and August, I do need to supplement them with some water. They're not gonna just do good with no water whatsoever. Wherever you place zinnias in your garden, be prepared for lots of pollinators. I like to put zinnias in a place where I can easily see them from a window or a bench or a chair because it's a great place to just sit and watch the bumblebees go nuts in that area. I've also found that um, during the monarch butterfly season, they tend to swarm around my zinnia patches, which is just glorious. Um, last year, I maybe had 20 to 30 monarch butterflies at the same time in my zinnia patch. It was absolutely amazing. So wherever you place your zinnias, make sure it's in a spot where you can easily see them and observe all the pollinators. Zinnias are very easy to start from seed. You can start them inside or you can start them um, directly outside. One of the things I love about zinnia seeds is they sprout very quickly, anywhere from like three to five days. So you know very quickly if your seeds have germinated and if they don't germinate it, it's not so much of a length of time that you can't just start over and try again. Now there are two varieties of zinnias or two established lines of zinnias. The first one is called Zinnia Elegance. Zinnia elegance, these are the line of zinnias that are wonderful. They're tall and full and they're excellent for cut flowers. This is typically where you're gonna see the giants, the benaries, the queens, the senoritas, 
all of those series fall within that particular Zinnia Elegance variety. The second line of Zinnias is called Zinnia Angustifolia, and y'all know I'm going to butcher all those names, so I'll put that below. These are the much shorter, more compact varieties, and they tend to be more disease resistant. We'll get to diseases in a minute. These are the Zinnias that are really great for borders, and these are typically known as Zahara or um, Profusion Zinnias. So let's talk about diseases since I touched on that. Typically with diseases, the main things we're gonna deal with are powdery mildew and zinnia blight. Powdery mildew is gonna look like a gray um, kind of foggy look on top of the leaves, and that tends to occur at the end of the season or as zinnias are starting to age out. And it also tends to occur if you don't have enough airflow between your zinnias. I deal with powdery mildew every year on my zinnias. It does not stress me out. I don't tend to fight it very often. If for some reason a zinnia plant is overtaken by powdery mildew, I'll usually just cut it back or rip it out and drop another seed or drop another seedling in its place. One of the ways you can battle powdery mildew is by watering below. So drip lines are watering low to the ground. When you cascade water over the top and it lands on the leaves, that tends to form a little bit more powdery mildew. The other way to combat it is to allow enough oxygen and airflow between the plants so that you don't have a perfect setting for something like powdery mildew. The other disease that I've dealt with in the past is zinnia blight, and that just tends to be spots on the leaves. Typically when I see something like that, I'll pull off those particular leaves, or if the plant is too far gone, I'll just cut it and remove it and replace it with a new seed or a seedling. Zinnias grow so quickly, you can get some of them in 50 days. Like you can go seed to bloom in 50 days, which is amazing. I just find them very easy to replace throughout the entire season. Since I have a longer growing season in my zone 8A, we go from April all the way to end of October, sometimes halfway through November, I usually can get a couple of rounds of zinnias going. The zinnias do have a certain point where they just reach their max, they kind of age out, and then they kind of stop blooming. You'll start to see the fungal or powdery mildew kind of build up on them at that point, and that's a good time to remove that plant and start them over again. And with my long growing season, I typically do have to do that. If you are in a zone or an area that has a shorter growing season, most likely you're only going to need to do one set of zinnias throughout your growing season. When you're preparing a bed for zinnias, you definitely want to loosen the soil. You want to make sure you're going to have adequate water supply in that area. And that I like to apply a slow release fertilizer, such as plant tone or flower tone, um, apply that throughout the whole um, garden bed and then plant your zinnias. I don't tend to do a lot more fertilizing after that, truthfully, just because I forget. Um, I'm not very good at doing the water soluble fertilizer and remembering to do that on consistent basis, but that's fine. As long as you are putting down the slow release fertilizer, your zinnias will be plenty fed for at least three months. So zinnias also need a certain amount of pruning for their care as well. The zinnia elegance line, and remember that's the taller varieties, you do want to pinch back that seedling between 6 and 12 inches in height. You want to count up two sets of leaves from the base of the plant and then pinch above that second set of leaves. And that will cause more branching, more flowers, and a bushier plant. For the zinnia angosifolia particular varieties, those are the shorter, more compact varieties, I typically like to give them a quote-unquote haircut and um, prune them out back by about 30 40 percent typically in July and August the hottest time of the year it's when plants need a little bit more relief they don't want to be blooming their heads off but that's when I like to kind of round them out top them off a little bit and then allow them a whole nother flush to be created before the fall comes. Now pruning is not required if you do not decide to pinch back your, um, your zinnia seedlings. They will still go up and once you cut your first flower they'll start branching out. And then the same for the shorter more compact pack series. You do not have to give them a haircut. I do find that if you don't give them a haircut they do get really leggy and they will flop a little bit not extreme, totally not a big deal, but that's totally up to you how you want to handle it. So I'm actually going to be starting a round of zinnias inside. And a lot of people ask, Amanda, why are you starting zinnias inside? It's because I'm a control freak. <laughs> that's literally what we're getting into. But there are like some legit reasons. First of all, it's super hot right now. It is, um, we're going to hit our first triple degree digits, um, second week in June. It's getting really hot. 
I don't want to spend any more time outside than I absolutely have to at this point. So starting the seeds inside allows me to spend a couple of hours inside instead of a couple of hours outside planting them. Also because it's so hot, when I start these seedlings, these seeds inside, it's easier to keep them consistently moist throughout their entire sprouting time. If there's outside, if they're outside and I forget, there's a good chance they could dry out and then I have to restart the whole process all over again. And then the, one of the biggest factors of why I like to start a lot of my zinnia seeds inside is I have a guaranteed seedling, right? So if you go out to your garden outside and you lay out all of the seeds and you water them, there's no guarantee that every single seedling is going to come up. So you might have large gaps where a seedling failed or seed failed and did not sprout. So then it's kind of weird because you have some gaps and, oh, do I need to dig this one up and move it over here? It's a whole thing. Then you're also going to have to deal with thinning outside as well. If I start all my seedlings inside, my zinnia seedlings out inside, then once I know everything sprouted, all of the successful seedlings, I can plant in the exact spot that I want within the garden. I don't have to worry about something not sprouting, something didn't get enough water or having to thin them out. Okay, so now for the really fun part, let's talk about the zinnia varieties that I am about to start inside. Okay, so one of my favorite trays to use is from Amazon, so I'm just pulling these forward. I'll put the link um, to my Amazon storefront below, and if you're interested in these trays, you can order them. Um, I've been very happy with them so far in the process, and I've already done multiple sets of seedlings through them. So it comes with a green tray, and it comes with an additional tray with holes in the bottom, um, and it holds 12 seedlings per tray and then it has a top that goes on top and it has the little dial which I don't usually stress about I put the dial in and then I just leave it closed until it's time to take off the lid anyway and then it also comes with a little spade and a little scoop you know so it makes the whole process easier it even has a little dauber um, so you can make the hole for your seedlings. So I usually start with a set of 12. So all the zinnias that I'm about to go over today, I'm going to be starting a set of 12 at each of those zinnias. Okay, so first we're going to start with the Zinnia Elegance series. And remember, that's the tall varieties that are great for cutting. Those are the varieties where you're going to find the Benaries, the Giants, the Cactus, the Dahlia varieties, um, the Queen Lime series. All of that's going to be within the Zinnia Elegance family. So the first variety I'm going to be starting is the Zinnia Queen Lime Orange. Beautiful orange color. One of the great things about the Queen Lime series or any of the Queen series is that in any given pack, you're going to get 10 or 12 different color combinations in there. They're all going to be in within that orange range, but they're not going to be all exactly alike throughout the series. So that's one thing I really like. It has a lot of variety. I do think that the Queen series tends to be a little bit smaller balloons, more of a medium size but the variety of colors and the interest like just within one single flower is so amazing they're so worth it to grow and I love to cut them in and cut them and bring them in for arrangements so I'm also going to be doing the queen lime red which I have grown before and I've grown the queen lime orange too as well and um, these I think they get anywhere about 36 inches tall they're a little bit shorter than some of the other varieties but each plant will produce anywhere from 10 to 12 flowers even more depending on how well you're keeping them cut back next is the queen lime blush and I do feel like this is a more petite bloom compared to the rest of the queen lime series um, and these queen lime blush they have a lot of green and yellow soft pinks in them really really pretty very interesting blooms and I do feel like this particular variety of the queen lime series is a little bit shorter as well so now new to me this year is the queenie lemon peach which I got this particular variety from Baker Creek so this will be new to me this year and these look you know kind of like a yellowy mostly yellow with um kind of peach towards the center which I think looks really really pretty it says its blooms are about two to four inches tall it's only about 70 days to bloom I'm very interested to see how this one compares to the queen lime orange see how much of a difference is there in these what I think looks different on these queenie lemon instead of the queenie lime is obviously the lemons are going to have more yellow tones and the queen limes are going to have more green tones. 
Next is a new to me variety, and this is from Johnny's Selected Seeds, and it is the Giant Dahlia Flowered White Zinnia, and it is a Zinnia Excellence. It is anywhere from 40 to 50 inches in height, um, 75 to 90 days to bloom, um, but it looks pretty nice too. I like to have a white Zinnia because I think it's really fun for arrangements, and it's very elegant to have some white within your garden, and so I always try to grow at least a couple of white blooms each season. Okay, and then moving on to the Zinnia and Gustafolia particular family or variety line, I'm going to be doing Zinnia Persian Carpet, and I'm going to be preparing these. I'm starting these now and preparing these for the fall because I love all these fall colors. So I want to go ahead and start these particular seeds now. The plant should be flowering. Mm. It does not say on here. I assume it's around 60 to 70 days um, to flowering. And if you look at it, I'm kind of mid-June. If you look at 60 to 70 days, that's going to get me to the end of August going into September, which is about the time when I would start transitioning my garden a little bit more for fall colors. So I think this will be great. I'm actually going to start two sets of 12s of the Persian carpet. Um, these blooms are really pretty, lots of browns, um, burgundies, golden tones, yellows, oranges, just absolutely perfect for a fall garden. Okay, so that's six varieties of zinnias I'm gonna start now. Outside of my garden right now, I've already got multiple varieties out there that reseeded themselves from last year. I planted Purple Prince about four or five years ago, and it has consistently reseeded itself each year. I have not planted it since. I've also planted um, some of the red varieties, some of the double enchantress, um, a couple of different varieties out there, and they have also begun to reseed themselves as well, which is really fun. And then I did plant some of the Queen Lime series in one of my garden beds, and while they're not flowering yet, I because of their location, I do think they have decided to reseed themselves. So I should be seeing a little bit more of the Queen Lime Blush and the Queen Lime Orange, which I planted last year. Now, because I'm not sure that that's definitely what those are, that's why I'm also going to start some of those from seed because I want to guarantee that I have them. Now you can start zinnia seeds at a wide variety of times throughout your growing season. A lot of people will start them inside indoors about four weeks prior to their last frost, and then about a week after the last frost, we'll go ahead and plant all the seedlings outside. Um, like I said, I tend to do a couple of rounds of zinnias, so I've already got zinnias that are full grown that I've begun harvesting, and so now this is my next round that I'm starting. Um, you can start them all the way up until about 90 days before your first freeze. Okay, so we talked a lot about zinnias today. I am going to very quickly get a bunch of these seeds started and then show you what everything looks like at the end. Okay, so I've got everything planted up. A couple of things that I did, I used a standard a potting soil. I did not use a seed starting soil. I have started using this um, particular one called BM7 from uh, Homegrown in Farmersville. It's soil and I think it's fine grained enough. It's a really good like potting soil. I think it's fine grained enough for it to be um, utilized as a seedling, as for starting seedlings. Another thing I did differently is I filled all the trays with dry soil and then I filled up the bottom containers about three quarters of the way with water and then just put them in there and just allow the water to soak up. Uh, so far it's done great. The, so the water has come all the way to the surface. I thought that was less messy. Um, so I went with that situation this time. All of the zinnias are planted about a quarter of an inch deep, and in most of them, I put two or three seeds. Some of them I only put one because I didn't have as many. I thought Baker's Creek didn't have very many seeds in it. It was um, like 
$4 for 25 seeds. It seems like a little bit more than what I typically play, pay for Johnny's. Um, and then I labeled everything. So at this point, I will put uh, domes on all of them. And the dome I will have closed. And the dome will just go on top like this. And the dome will stay on there until about 60% of the tray has sprouted. Once they've sprouted, then you take the dome off and you're done with the dome the rest of the time. You don't want to keep your domes on for long periods of time because that can help. Um, that makes um, the, it's too damp inside there for the seedlings and you can get damping off, which means your seedlings will just die. You get more likely to get fungus, that kind of thing. Um, I don't boil my soil, soil ahead of time to deal with fungus gnats. I just put the little sticky things in doesn't bother me and know it drives other people crazy but it's totally up to you guys um, and so these take about three to five days to sprout I will have them on the heat mats you don't necessarily have to have them on the heat mats because these do sprout at about 70 to 75 degrees so depending on how warm uh, your house is you can get them sprouted inside without a heat mat I will have mine under my grow lights and I'll show you guys at the end when that's all set up so they will be under grow lights uh, so that that they can have adequate light to grow. You can start all your seeds inside and have them sprout. And then if it's warm enough outside, you can bring your seedlings outside and allow them to continue to grow outside in the sun. Make sure they're in a nice sunny location. Other than that, the rest of this transitioning will happen once these are ready to go outside. I don't plan on taking these outside until probably second or third week in July. I'm going to have them do most of their growing inside, um, which is just a little bit more of a control <laughs> factor for me. If they move quickly and they're growing, which some of them might, then I might transfer them outside quicker. Typically, the Zinnia Elegance are going to grow taller faster, so those are most likely the ones I'll transfer outside quicker. The Zinnia Angostifolia ones, those are the shorter, more uh, compact ones. Those will stay inside longer because they're more for my fall garden. So I'll probably be into August before I decide to plant those into the actual garden. Now I do intend on giving you guys updates. I will do a video um, giving you updates on these and then when I'm actually planting them out into the garden. Okay, a couple of more helpful tips and tricks for Zinnias. They are cut and come again flowers, meaning the more that you cut on them, the more they're going to produce. So so you can definitely put them out in your garden, just allow them to bloom and leave them that way. But if you see this, if you see them having a little bit less production or they've only produced one or two blooms per plant, go in there, take the bloom, follow all the way down and cut it above a set of two leaves. And where those two leaves come and you cut that flower and stem off, it will produce two stems from there and will give you more blooms along the way. Another really good tip is, like I was saying, I was kind of disappointed that I paid $4 for 25 cents seeds of this particular queen line blush series and I am terrible about remembering to do this but you can harvest your seeds from your zinnias what you want to do is you want to allow a flower to completely dry brown on the actual plant once that's done you can clip the flower and then you can gently pull the petals and at the end of each petal will be a single seed and you can save those seeds for the following season I allow a lot of mine just to reseed directly into the garden and I do have a lot of zinnia seedlings that come back every year because of that and my third tip and trick for zinnias is just enjoy don't overthink it don't over over baby them just enjoy and allow them to do their thing these are a great gateway flower into doing more uh, seeds and that's because they're so easy to grow from seed now you can absolutely go buy these in the nursery and I do that I have lots of zinnias in my garden that I've grown that I grow directly from the nursery and that's great I tend to do more of the profusion and Zahara zinnias that way but the elegance ones are so easy to grow from seed and this is a really great way to get started in seed production production and growing plants from seeds within your home. Okay, let's get these set up on the grow lights. Okay, here they are all set up. I've got the heat mats underneath. I did lift them up closer to the lights. One of the things I'm going to be doing over the winter um, season is I'm going to be adding additional uh, shelves in between this so I can lift my seats up closer 
So I've got them all lined up and you can see the soil is completely moist. All the water has soaked up and I will make sure that I check these on a daily basis to make sure that they are staying moist. And once again, once about 50 to 60% of the seedlings have sprouted in one container, I will remove the dome and allow them to grow from there. All right, you all, I hope you enjoyed today's video, learning about all things zinnias. If you haven't tried zinnias before, you need to try them. If you've been growing zinnias forever, try some new varieties. Drop any varieties that you love in the comments down below. Or if you have an amazing tip or trick for anyone who's growing zinnias, make sure you comment below and let us know. Also, I would love to know if there's anybody who does not like zinnias. I have yet to meet a gardener who does not like zinnias at all. So if you're that person, let us know and let us know why and what issues you dealt with and why you choose not to grow zinnias anymore. All right, you all, as always, make sure you hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you know when my latest videos are up. I highly encourage you <laughs> to hit that subscribe button. I've been having a lot of people contact me being like, I'm not seeing any of your videos. I don't know why they're not showing up in my feed. And for some reason they thought they had subscribed, but then they weren't subscribed anymore. I don't know if that's something going on with YouTube or not, but please make sure you have subscribed and make sure you hit the little bell right beside the subscribe button. So it will allow you and notify you once a video comes up. You might've noticed I do not post on a regular, schedule. And make sure you check me out on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. I post different things on those channels, not stuff that you necessarily see on this particular YouTube channel. As always, she's a mad gardener or decorator or anything else that she wants to be. Thanks, y'all.